Hey everyone, I'm Eric from Lonesome Reader, and as some of you may know, uh, because I frequently say it, Joyce Carol Oates is my favorite author, and today, June 16th, is her birthday. Uh, and coincidentally, uh, June 16th is also Bloomsday, uh, the day on which James Joyce set his novel Ulysses. Get it? James Joyce? Joyce Carol Oates. <laughs> she is turning 81 and she is just as intellectually engaged and productive today as she has been throughout her uh, extensive and uh, very respectable career in writing. So given all this, I want to make a video talking about some things that people ought to know about JCO because I feel like there's a lot of assumptions and misunderstandings about both the author and her books. In this video, I'll primarily address her productivity how she writes so much, uh, why I think her books are so important right now, and what book I would recommend you read first if you've never read anything by JCO before. Now, I know here Eric goes again talking about Joyce Carol Oates. Uh, my friends make fun of me a lot for going on and on about Joyce Carol Oates and roll their eyes. And the, the first video I made for my YouTube channel, or one of the first videos I made, was almost exactly three years ago, and it was talking about Joyce Carol Oates, and it was very roughly made, so I thought it was time for an updated version. Uh, but I wouldn't talk about her writing so much if I didn't honestly feel her books were so great. Living at a time when she is publishing feels like I'm witnessing in real time the publication of books by Charles Dickens or Virginia Woolf or William Faulkner. I mean, how could I not be excited? And it's not as if Joyce Carol Oates is the only author I talk about. If you ever read my blog or watch uh, other videos on my YouTube channel, you'll know that I read lots and lots of other authors, uh, but I find myself consistently coming back to Joyce Carol Oates, and I'm always excited about new books uh, that she publishes every year, and she does publish a new book every year, or sometimes multiple books a year. The fact that Oates publishes so much is to her great credit, but also I think to the unfortunate detriment of her reputation because a lot of people um, who haven't read her before assume that she must be churning out books like a factory. How would that even be possible? But reading her new publications every year, I can assure you there's an impressive, consistent quality to her work and a surprising variety. I mean, she does often write about the lives of teenage girls or adolescent girls um, set in upper New York State, um, the region which she was born and raised in, and I'm reading one right now. Um, her new novel is called My Life as a Rat, and it uh, chronicles the life of a girl who is uh, exiled from her family for ratting out her brothers who committed a racist attack. But it also writes about so many different subjects and varieties of people from young to old, men and women, uh, rich and poor, queer women and queer men, the ardently religious, mass murderers, con artists, presidents and refugees. Her characters really encompass the full spectrum of society. And she approaches these lives and personalities using so many different forms forms of writings and styles of narrative, uh, from uh, more gothic fiction to suspense stories, um, stream of consciousness, and much more just realistic narratives. But I think it is interesting how she often focuses on the perspective of young women and adolescent girls as a way of highlighting um, how these young women are particularly vulnerable in American society. Um, and she's written about them in many different scenarios. Oates most famous short story, Where Are You Going? Where Have You Been? involves a girl being lured away from her home by a devilish type figure. Uh, her novel, Maria, is a semi-autobiographical novel about a young woman's journey through university. Foxfire describes how a gang of girls join together uh, to take advantage of predatory men. Blonde gives a fictionalization of the life of Norma Jean Baker in a very Dickensian tale, from her adolescence in an orphanage to turning into the phenomenon that is Marilyn Monroe. 
The sacrifice shows how a young black woman is taken advantage of and turned into a pawn by warring political powers. A Book of American Martyrs describes the separate journeys of the daughters of two different men fatally involved in an altercation about abortion rights. And one of Oates' most famous novels, We Were the Mulvaney's, uh, describes the life of a teenage girl who is the victim of sexual assault and who has been rejected by her family. But the novel describes how she still has many different paths open to her, enabling her to be productive and thrive despite this attack. And this is an important point because Oates never portrays these young women just as victims. Uh, she faithfully describes their struggle, but she also uh, conveys their resiliency and ingenuity for recreating themselves and surviving. There's always a note of hope and optimism to their stories, no matter the difficulties they encounter. This doesn't just apply to her female characters, and I think it's why I'm so drawn to her writing because I'm someone who's experienced rejection in the past like, like a lot of people have. But it's about endurance and finding other paths in life. And even if your family rejects you, uh, making your own family in order to achieve a sense of belonging. It's about defining yourself rather than letting others define you. And this is the message I so often get from Oates books that even if we're rendered voiceless or made to feel like our voice doesn't have importance, uh, our point of view still has value and our personalities persist no matter the obstacles we face. And speaking of persistence, uh, something about Oates' famous productivity. People always ask, how does she write so much? And uh, Greg Johnson, uh, Joyce Carol Oates' biographer, he interviewed Oates' mother before she died and he asked her what she was like as a child and her mother said she always had to finish what she was doing. And I think this sense of persistence is key. Everyone gets ideas for stories, but actually sitting down and fulfilling your vision is much harder, but Oates has a knack for tenaciously sticking with a story till it's complete, and there's no magic formula. She describes in this book of essays, Soul at the White Heat, how each hour's work feels so anxiously wrought and hard won. It's just spending the time day after day writing, uh, which allows her to write so much. But she also describes in, in this book her intense engagement and wonder uh, with the, the books that she's reading as well. And so I think it's this, this passionate engagement with literature which really drives her as well. And you know how we as readers, as passionate readers, we often get asked like how we read so much. And I think it's the, the same issue. It's, it's like, well, because we're, we're so passionate about it, we read so much. And because she is so passionate about writing, she writes so much. It's quite simply because we love it. So if you've never read Oates, where do you begin? Uh, the novel that I always suggest people start with is this book called The Gravedigger's Daughter. Uh, this is the story of Rebecca, who is the daughter of an immigrant family. She's literally born on the boat as they're traveling to America. And there's a big tragedy early on in her life. And she needs to find ways to recreate herself and survive and persist. But she always maintains the, the secrets of this unacknowledged history inside of her. It's a brilliantly epic novel about negotiating how to live with all this weighty and unspoken history. And I recommend it specifically because I think it encompasses a lot of Oates' major themes uh, that I've talked about already. So I think it's a good taste of what her writing is like. But like I said, uh, there's an incredible variety to her work. So that's what keeps me reading Oates because even though I can identify common themes in her work, I'm consistently surprised by the ingenuity of the forms of her writing and her ability to surprise me even though I've read almost all of her books and there's over a hundred of them. So let me know if you've read JCO before and what your favorite book by her is or if you've not read her before let me know if you're interested in reading her now. I hope you are and I hope if you do uh, you discover a new favorite writer by reading her books. Uh, so thank you for letting me geek out about Joyce Carol Oates again uh, and I'll speak to you again soon. Bye everyone!